So with all of all that right, out of the way, movie, Mick, getting, I've uh, got a movie for you. <laughs> what's the matter with you? <laughs> I'm the madman and I'm on a roll. So <laughs> <laughs> the movie I would love for you to fix for me is a Nicolas Cage classic. It's, oh. it's one that I have loved and I went and saw live in Le Theatre, which was pretty dope back in the day. You remember at the Manassas cinemas. Oh, yeah. Great place. Oh, so back in back in 2007, there was this fantastic little flick which ties in to our delightful discussion from earlier, in fact, because Josh brought up uh, they have a Nick Cage podcast and Renfield is coming out soon, which I'm super excited to see Renfield, if nothing else, for Nicholas Holt actually playing the titular character Renfield. So that'll be pretty fantastic. Uh, and we get Nick Cage as Dracul, the Lord of the Night, the most evil, blood-sucking monster we've ever known in our lives, the OG big guy that Gary Oldman originally crushed the role of. We get the follow-up in Nick Cage. So my friend, to me, there's a movie that requires fixing. There's a movie I need to hear you tear apart and be fantastic with this flick. Can you please fix Nick Cage's 2007 A Ghost Rider? Oh, I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, buddy, because this is a movie I wanted to love, and I still want to love it, and I can't. <laughs> um, Yes, I think I can. I've been giving this movie a lot of thought for many years because, okay, a little bit of backstory because we were getting into the Nick Cage. Nick Cage is my favorite actor, and people who look at me funny when I say that, I don't understand why, because you can give me any other actor, any other actor today who is acting, and I can tell you why Nick Cage is better than that. C Casey, throw out an actor for me. Uh, at this very moment, let's go Alden Ehrenreich. Give me another actor I know. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Ewan McGregor. Oh, fuck, I love Ewan McGregor. All right. But true. God, that was such a hard one. This is a close one. But okay, that's a good point. It's a good point. Still, every time I watch Ewan McGregor on screen, amazing he gets lost in the character it's wonderful it's fantastic it's one of my favorite actors as well but nick cage encompasses every role you cannot watch a single nick cage movie and find a similar role in any of them what about him versus sean connery that yeah i mean stanley goodspeed wasn't anything else Right, of, you only you know, got one Stanley Goodspeed. You have a million Sean Connerys playing said character. Yep. Boom. So boom, right there. That's what got me into the fact that this movie, with Nicolas Cage, in my opinion, being probably the best working actor today, because he gets lost. True actor, not movie star actor. Mm -hmm. No, agreed. I, you know, just in case anybody's listening and like you're an idiot, <laughs> uh, I may still be, but I have points. And this point is Ghost Rider, even the sequel, I can defend. Ghost Rider is the only Nick Cage movie I can defend. And I've seen Vampires Kiss, man. <laughs> Which is true. And that was a tough one. Yeah. Although so, I did like that. Wasn't it? Vampires Embrace. Nope, that's the Alyssa Milano one. Oh, bringing it back. What's up, Kathleen? <laughs> I see you, girl. <laughs> What'd you say? Uh, way back when she she had mentioned the uh, Alyssa Milano was the only reason I watched Charmed. Oh, you were and then it I back. bring it back to Vampires Embrace. God damn it, I ruin everything. <laughs> it's okay, but in the most beautiful way. And you don't ruin <laughs> anything, you enhance it. I'm like that. I ruin things in the way that's like. Oh man, we're in the woods. We gotta we gotta build a fire. Let's collect sticks. And I knock down a tree and break everything. <laughs> <laughs> Let's burn this. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally valid. Hey guys, we have to be quiet. Crunch, boom, boom, smash, boom, jeesh. All right, guys. I found a path. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Like, there are places that I want you in horror movies, Mick. If we're going down, like, an old, uh, like, a, a wrong turn or some sort of hills in the Appalachia, that's not a that's not a place. That's not one of them. <laughs> There's a lot of places that's not one of them. <laughs> so, Although, 
if we're in Washington State, I'm down because you could be Sasquatch. So let's do this. All thing. right. See, Casey's getting on that jazz again where he's making fun of anybody over 6'5". I'm not making fun of you. I'm stating that you all have had pictures taken of yourselves and treated as weirdos. So I'm just, I'm going with the natural flow of 1915. All right. I'm just. <laughs> Little known fact, though, the only recorded sh- uh, foot so- foot mold of Bigfoot mm-hmm. that they ever had is only 13 inches. And I'm 18 inches. So I'm a 13. Ah. Oh, man. Those people were tiny. Well, look at you, little foot. <laughs> right. Oh, we folk over here. <laughs> you know what's really weird is walking through medieval castles and being like, oh, this is around the thirteen hundreds. Everyone duck. <laughs> like they're all very tiny. <laughs> and FYI, everybody is listening. And if you're watching this segment on the did I fix short that we put out on our YouTube page. Just understand I'm leaving all this stuff in in between (laughs) Nick Cage talk. I'm not editing any of it. So you have to listen to all of it until I get to me fixing Ghost Rider, which is coming up in a few seconds. Which is great, but I'm glad you're doing that. And also, let us not forget that there's no will be no removal. I will insist upon one point. This is the only point. I One of the few times I will do this during your fix it. You must keep Karen Carpenter in there. Oh, it's one of the only highlights of the whole movie. It's one of the highlights of the whole movie is him singing the Carpenters because it's beautiful music. Fine. I'll keep Thank them. you. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's 2007. I can get away with that one. <laughs> <laughs> so don't you remember you told me I love you, baby. We should start only be like this. Th- did I fix? We should start it where it's like, okay, fix this movie, but only with the technology of that day. <laughs> Which is perfect because all you need is a, a hi fi stereo and you're good to go. There you go. No, but with Ghost Rider, it's actually quite a few simple fixes. One, mm-hmm. all flashbacks have to go. One of the worst aspects of that movie is the fact that they will flash back to something that was said three minutes ago. Oh right back to it to remind you and it's like do you think we're the dumbest human beings on the planet (laughs) (laughs) do you you think we can't remember three minutes ago that's so true i hate flashbacks from a movie within the movie i'm like stop it we saw this (laughs) oh my god and then when you finally get to the end and it flashes back to the beginning and you're like what are you doing oh well so that i'd get rid of all those Okay. Then you got to get rid of that, the Western Ghost Rider, which cool, mm-hmm. but it ain't for the first one. No, nah, it's fair. Stop the whole Western theme thing. Okay. I would have made it more in the line with uh, of Constantine. Like, so, like, hmm. almost like if you thought about it as a story, this would be Johnny Blaze's journey his beginning journey and then we might see him as like a constantine like character in that setting you know what so I maybe mean? we get through like yeah absolutely so we get through John, johnny blaze actually being the the spirit of vengeance for a little bit and then realizing yo i don't want to be the spirit of vengeance and then fighting back and becoming the ghost rider okay yeah. i love that already yeah so, what else you got and i'm perfectly fine west bentley I, I didn't think did a bad job it was just the whole boy band's you know, demon thing they had going on that was just ridiculous. Uh, and it was a little too clean, you know, visual effects of the time. It was just a little odd, but you got to let it go, especially if it goes with the times, you know, and what they had. So with all of that, the story's not bad at its core. Mm-hmm. You open up at the beginning with this father and everything and how he got turned into it. I'd make it a little grittier, mm-hmm. you know, a little okay. more like Constantine again, like that tone. Mm-hmm. you know and it's just his opening daredevil mm-hmm. like that and then like he you know sells a soul so yeah getting into all of that like i would keep it i would keep the girlfriend in there you can even keep even mendez i didn't think she was bad i just didn't think it was a great fit i didn't think there was a lot of chemistry there it, okay so that was a big point for me <laughs> like, and this is a huge one for me is i love eva mendez as an actress she's done a fantastic job in, in most of her work in this one it's not her it's a it's a them yeah. issue you know what i'm saying they just didn't have a them thing they did in the beginning which kind of was awesome but for some reason midway through that movie like they just 
I don't know if they filmed it differently if they're due to the, the how they may have grown together later in filming, but something about that second half of the movie didn't feel as worthwhile as it's supposed to. The stakes yeah. weren't high enough. So what else you got? Well, well, for one, I would say to add to that, what you're saying, um, you got to remember too, she was like, what, 24, 25 when that movie came out? Mm -hmm. yeah. And he was 40. No, oh, no, look, you know, absolutely. I, it's an uncomfortable distance in age to make that leap. Yeah, and but no also they're, yeah. they're trying to sell it as they grew up together. Right. And it's like, that doesn't really work, man. Like you need an, like I would have gotten like a Maria Bello of the time, something like that. Like Ooh. you know, a little bit closer to the age. Yeah. Um, adds a Monica Bellucci. Of... Well, no, I would not. Have... That, would, that would be <laughs> that would be a terrible choice. <laughs> I mean, she's an amazing actress, but they they already had Captain Corelli's mandolin. We don't need any more of this. All right, we're moving along you're like, already. You like you like kicked me in the teeth on that one. <laughs> Sorry, it just felt right. So I, I automatically thought of Monica Bellucci from whatever that stupid movie with Clive Owen is. The one there is like the live action Looney Tunes with guns. Oh, it's the worst. Yeah, but you got to remember, Monica Bellucci just played Jesus's mom two years before that in no Passion way, of the you're Christ. Right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yo, you're right. Oh, so now you're great. aging up. Now you're saying they yeah. grew up together and it's like Faye Dunaway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they definitely grew up together one is dealing with a, a an alcohol problem the other one has a hip issue so obviously they're pretty similar you know that's that's right on par <laughs> oh my god yeah so i mean i think the best fix for this as i talk my head off here um you just you get rid of all that stuff you make it a little grittier you keep nick cage you can even keep the karen carpenter scene um i would i would recast the friend role even though i love don Log. i just didn't think he, he had good chemistry with him either Concur. uh and i thought he was out of his element he, you know new york guy playing sort of like a like i guess coming off like a hillbilly or redneck vibe type yeah um and he still seemed younger than Nick Cage. So, like, it just, all of it didn't really mesh well. So, like, I would age up a lot of the supporting cast if you're going to keep Cage to where his level was at that point. Mm -hmm. Then I would, I, actually, I would probably, if you're going to do anything, go back to the, the beginning with the father um, and how that kind of planned out. And then when you jump forward to where he's a daredevil, he's been the ghostwriter for a while. Yes. And if you're going to do yes. flashbacks to anything, flashbacks to his change. Boom. I love and it. And so he's been the ghostwriter for a while, and he's going on and on. And now he's been fighting back. Like, he had collected souls for so long. Mm -hmm. Now he's kind of broken away, and that's where the turmoil comes in. That's why, like, they're – it's almost like a Percy Jackson – in in my mind, it's like a Percy Jackson the Lightning Thief sort of thing where they – he's sending the worst demons after him mm -hmm. to you know almost you know just because it's like that call the herd you know oh, yeah like get the herd yeah. going and, and have them do it and so like now he's on the hunt as the ghost rider and it just gets into like that, that yeah so like and it and again with that tone of constantine and that look and that way he can play a, a young 35 or a strong mm -hmm. 38 with his weird Sort of like Puerto Rican Beetlejuice look. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But you, yeah, but if you take him and now he's a daredevil by day when he's doing his thing, and that's because he's always on the move, going mm -hmm. from show to show, and that's what he needs to be as the, as the Ghost Rider. You know? I dig that. I think that works. I think, honestly, I can say the things you did, the aging up was probably the biggest get for me. You definitely nailed it on that because I think the, the chemistry was an issue due to the age and sam elliott somehow made more sense to be closer to nick cage's age than anyone else did yeah so and, and even if you add that element of like she's the reporter and like now she's like trying to figure out the ghostwriter and who he is mm -hmm. you do that now but his friend has been chasing the ghostwriter down she's been a, a serious journalist for a while and that's how they come back together again is that she's finally chased the ghostwriter down in connection with him 
Yeah. Oh, I like that. Bring yeah. her back in that way, you know? Yeah. My friend, I believe you just fixed 2007's Nicolas Cage, The Ghost Rider. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you, sir. Absolutely, um, sir. Which I'm excited to see Renfield, which will uh, have to do with the Senor de la Cage. 